So in terms of the school board, uh, when we went into March break, we did not realize the reality that was waiting for us. Um, and so it did take us a bit of time because we just, we weren't prepared, right? And I don't think many people were prepared for what was to unfold. Um, and so one of the first things we had to do was make sure all of our families in our system were connected uh, to uh, the internet. And so we had 22,000 families who had not provided us an email address. So we had to make sure we contacted each one of those families um, to make sure we can set them up with the proper platforms that they would need to carry out remote learning. We then had to make sure every family in our system had access to internet and a device for the child um, to, to engage with. And so as, t as of today, we've provided 29,000 devices that have um, internet access on them as well. Um, and so as of April 6th, we were finally able to uh, get our remote learning um, started. And I do want to make sure that we differentiate remote learning from e-learning. E-learning has a particular pedagogical um, sort of embedded into how they deliver instruction. What we're doing is of course not that, right? We, we you know, for example, teaching elementary students um, is, was not meant or designed to be done on, you know, over the internet. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that we are able to provide instruction, make sure we meet curriculum as much as possible through, you know, the means that we have. And so what we're using right now is the um, Google Classroom and Brightspace. Um, and teachers are, um, we've also as a board provided professional development for teachers. So we've so far had 48 uh, professional development sessions and we've had 3,600 teachers participate. Um, and, and as we go through this, you know, uh, for parents, the advice I would say is um, be patient, but diligent, right? That, that this is new for teachers as well. Um, teachers were not prepared for this and not all teachers use these sorts of platforms. So, you know, they're also learning as, as along with your, your child, right? And, and, and that's great because the best teachers are the ones that are always learning. And so this is something new for them to learn, um, learn as well. Um, so in terms of a concern that I get asked often is in regards to my child's mark. What's going to happen with my child's mark? And, and what I would say for that is right now, it's making sure that we you know, don't have a big gap, but also realizing we're not gonna be able to do all the things that we were able to do within a classroom. So as of March, you know, people typically have most of their marks done. So your child's mark is not going to change that much. We are focusing on grade 12s because we do know the reality that they will be going off to post-secondary school and will need certain marks to um, get into their desired programs. Um, so I can go on and on about this, but I do want to keep the video brief. Um, and this is continuing to unfold, right? I'm sure we'll um, receive more sort of um, challenges and hopefully come up with some great solutions for those challenges as well. Thank you for your time.